Welcome to Fish Talk TV. This is Fishing for the Rest of Us. Uh, I'm Charlie. I'm Mark. And I'm Joe. It's kind of uh, Manny Mo and Jack for fishing, as it were. <laughs> we, uh, we're the guys that fish as often as we can, and I like to get out every week, but it's not always the case, so that's why we say it's fishing for the rest of us. Uh, fishing more like the average guy than the, the hardcore who run out there to run the reef and all that type of thing. Um, look, there's a lot to talk about this week. Uh, of course, the weather has been good. Yeah. Uh, it's been healthy for us. We've had a, a fair amount of constant wind uh, that's been blowing up. Um, um, now you guys pulled about three weeks ago? Yeah, we pulled at the beginning of November. Uh, our contract was up at the marina at the end of October. And uh, we stuck it out trying to catch what we thought was going to be an early run of stripers. And they never came. Uh, you know, all we were some locals and some small things, but nothing for us. So we yanked. Uh, well, we stayed in. Uh, we came out this week, uh, the week after Thanksgiving, and uh, we got one the entire season. Actually, my son got it. It was uh, a 43 inches, about 28 nice pounds, fish. and he was delicious. Yes, he was. <laughs> uh, we got enough. Yes, she yeah, was. Yeah, he, well, she <laughs> was, actually. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's the only one we had. Now, fishing as a whole uh, has been kind of spotted. Uh, depending upon where you're at. Mm -hmm. uh, the Delaware Bay, uh, you got great runs for a day or two. You hear all the word, you go down, and uh, you just sit uh, and do nothing. Now, Mark, you and I went down. Yeah. Someone we know was working. We won't mention who. <laughs> uh, I, so I wait, saved my time. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, actually he did because we got a great uh, big nothing. Right, Mark? Oh, boy, it was a real nice, beautiful day. But uh, unfortunately, the fish were not biting, and there were so many boats out there. Yeah. You were the Delaware Bay was packed. Where were you? We were at the bottom of the 20 foot slough, about uh, three miles north of the uh, ferry inlet um, side of the canal, about a mile off the beach. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where we were been heading, and that's where all the reports have been. The other reports have been down at uh, the bottom of the 60. Maybe around a pinpoint? Yeah, yes, exactly. And yes. those spots, all you saw were boats on the horizon. Boats, 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 and those two spots. It yeah, void every place. Else. When yeah. you guys were out there, did anybody catch anything? We didn't no. see anything. Any no other radios? Nothing. No. It was quiet the whole day. Quiet as a mouse. Hey, another one of these days where you have a peak of activity and then nothing. And right. dro dropped off. Now, and other places around the state that are doing fairly well, Joe, is my understanding. Up, uh, yeah, I was talking to a fellow who was uh, out of Love Ladies, and uh, he said they were doing well. He said, in fact, they were literally killing them. Uh, over the, the weekend, for Thanksgiving weekend just past, uh, they got uh, as many as they could catch. Uh, 30 to 40 inches long, 20 to 30 pounds, mm -hmm. one after another, uh, both guys on the beach as well as guys just off the beach jigging. Yeah. So they were doing really well, and uh, you know, like we've always seen when it comes to stripers, especially at the end of the season, uh, it seems like the deeper waters right off along Beach Island yeah. seem to hold them. When they get down to the shallows that we're in at Brigantine, they seem to go offshore. Yeah. So we just have just haven't seen them, or they're maybe they're coming in right now, but they weren't there then. So anyhow, they're doing okay up in the off of Long Beach Island. Yeah. In fact, uh, my friend uh, Mike Gardner and. Uh, his brother-in-law Joe Romano, they went out on Joe's boat uh, just on uh, this past weekend, and uh, Mike got a skate. Congratulations, Mike! <laughs> but uh, was it a left skate or a right skate? <laughs> was it a hockey or figure? <laughs> but uh, uh, Joe and his brother uh, both pulled up a uh, two nice striper. So, and they're they're in the uh, uh, Long Beach Island uh, Beach Haven area. So uh, it looks like uh, Beach Haven, or should I say uh, Long Beach Island? Great action, but when you come down to like Brigantine, where we are, as Joe, you said before, they sort of like miss us and go south. Yes. Well, they didn't come south enough last week. <laughs> uh, we sat out there for six hours uh, and had a great nap uh, because we really didn't do much of anything. Well, they went up yeah, at the end of the day. We had some uh, uh, interesting thing happen. Uh, they, we, we, our batteries died. So uh, we had a call, uh, our friends from CETO, who kind of came out and, and gave us a jump, boom, away we went, and we came back in. Now, on the way back in, Mark, 
Oh boy. We were racing back in it, and it started getting a little bit bigger chop, probably two, three footers on the way in, and we were racing a lot of boats. Everybody was coming in at that point, and we hit the inlet, and there was so much boat wake, Joe. We had Todd, Charlie's son, and sitting in front of the boat, and when we hit this one wake coming in the inlet, he flew up in the air. It was, was like this. <laughs> he didn't see it coming, so it was a surprise. <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, some brown marks in that forecast. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you. And when we hit Skin it, marks. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, Cole, oh. Uh, uh, your your grandson and myself got soaked from this wave coming up. And all wave action. It was, it was all. all the, we were in the jetty oh. inside the jetty. Oh, that's where it happened. It was. We were about halfway inside the jetty. Uh, and what happened is it's a rear action bounce wave mm -hmm. uh, from the larger boats. You have these 48, 50 footers coming in, and they had a bounce wave hit the hit the jetties and bounced back at us, and caught us from both sides and lifted up like a toy. Oh boy, that is dangerous. Uh, you know, oh, I'm sorry. Coming in though it was like a flotilla. Mark, how many, how many boats do you think we had? There was at least. 25 boats in front of us going in the canal and uh, looking backwards there was just as many coming in the inlet it, I, I've never seen a parade like this unless you know you're down at the uh, behind the <laughs> ocean city or something. <laughs> what you needed to do is quickly get up by the canal or uh, the middle canal and run a, a, a we call it a toll booth across <laughs> <laughs> well it was it was a mess but when we finally got back in the dock you know it was, it was, uh, it was getting late uh, late in the day, and uh, from a, a daylight point of view, um, and uh, we just of course packed it in, and, and said that's pretty much the end for the season. Now, my son did go out one more time. Uh, he went out uh, the Use day, the boat. yeah, out in, and uh, they did nothing again. Now, uh, the day that Mark, that you know, we had, we went out that morning, we had a report that uh, right where we were at the bottom of the twenty foot slough, a uh, fellow came in with two fish. Total weight, 94 pounds. Mm. Big, big, big. And there we are saying total weight, what do you think, huh? About 400? <laughs> 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 well, what are you going to do? That's, that's about all we had. So it's time for the gnashing of the teeth. The boat was pulled this week and not a whole lot left to do. So we start looking forward to last year, um, to, to next year. Maybe we ought to take a minute and uh, talk about what happened during the season. Mm -hmm. So I know you two guys who fish a lot, and you also document, document, document. As you know uh, from uh, some of the things we've shown you on some of the videos we have, in fact one of our demonstration videos is something we put together on uh, making documents and essentially recording what you've done. And uh, we went around and looked at our records for the season. Number uh, number one, we didn't go out very often this year because of you know well, you cost of work and you reported fourteen trips, which is why this is about fishing for the rest of us. Uh, well, fourteen trips is probably about uh, half or two thirds of what we would normally do. So it gives you an idea how much we were down this year. Yeah. But everybody was about the same, Joe. You know, everybody's got a, a is, is holding on to a nickels. A lot of guys are buddying up. Mm -hmm. We also ran into uh, the problem with the hurricane. The yeah. hurricane wiped us out for two or three weeks. Yeah. Oh, all of the end of August, the beginning of September, you yeah. know, those that weather. Yeah. So there were a number of things that really kept our, so our how fishing. How many in. flounder altogether? I think we caught 149 flounder. Keepers? Uh, I think we caught uh, 10. What was I forget? I remember it was uh, that 7. Was se that, no, 10. No, 10. 10. 10. 10. So, so we're talking so about 6.7%. So about 7% 7 7 of our, our fish that we caught were keepers. Wow. And if you guys, you know, you, if you see us out there, we, we fish hard. When we're out there, we don't have a long day many days, but we do catch a lot of fish, an average of minimum 10 fish a day, which for some guys isn't much, but you know, for us weekend warriors, that uh, we have to fish whatever tide, whatever winds, whatever comes up, because that's the day we have to go fish. We, don't, we can't look for that perfect day that people that live in the spot can do. Uh, it's not too bad, but it's way off from our normal year. Many years we'd catch as many as three or four hundred flounder a year, and bring home ten percent, about ten percent. You know, a twenty or better flounder. Well, looking back to the two thousand uh, eleven season for me, I've maintained uh, my quota and my record stands. 
No keepers. <laughs> Not one. <laughs> well, you know, of anything, I, I could have, except maybe a clamshell. I well, we've got a number of keepers with you with clamshells. I, I did have an aggressive uh, starfish. Uh, a starfish yeah. and lots of seaweed. Uh, in fact. You know, you got to be careful of seaweed. They bite. Well, you know? well, that's a vegan fish. <laughs> I think it's time that we trade Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to go to a different boat. <laughs> He's bringing bring our average down. <laughs> sad people. Really sad. But I try. I'm, I'm like you guys. And uh, but you know, Charlie, an 18-inch fish for a flounder, uh, we don't think of it as a big fish, but it's a relatively big fish. Mm -hmm. Although they can get to 30 inches, as you know, for the full length. Most flounder out there are probably in the 14 to 20 inch length for most of their life, and before they get eaten by other fish or uh, taken out of the ocean by us. So an 18 inch fish is a relatively big fish. There's a lot of meat on an 18 inch fish, but at the same time, in order to, to catch more than one a day of those, you've got to catch a lot of fish. You've got to catch a lot of fish. Yeah, as if, we you caught, if you had 10 keepers, you didn't have an average of one keeper per trip. No, no. In fact, most keepers came on two trips. Right. Like, now it has to be said that that 149 was just flounder. That's right. It doesn't count the blues or the black bass. Although blues this year, I, although we caught some this year, the numbers were extremely far down. Yeah, we caught maybe what four, and we brought home one. We could have brought home oh, the other. We caught more than four, but not very uh, many. Not money, much many. Yeah, maybe a couple spikes or, or, or you know snappers we're not talking about of actually ones that were worthy of bringing home, you know, uh, the large ones I don't necessarily like myself and the small ones are too small, but you know, the tailor size, mm -hmm. a little bit bigger than snapper, yeah, like or, or they're favorite. the perfect, you know, yeah, individual deal. And if we had three that size that were, you know, usable, and we only kept one fish, everybody else went back in, because you'd get one blue and it's like, why would I kill yeah, this right fish there. for the one individual? Yeah. Right. You know, it's not like years ago when we would hit uh, these these blitzes that would come through and you could fill a cooler up and really be selective on the fish. Those days are gone. Oh yeah. Another yeah. instance is the wheat fish. Mm -hmm. No, we did catch we, we caught wheat fish this caught year. Caught two or three, but they were about twelve inches. Oh, each. they weren't even twelve. We caught a, I caught one, Mark, remember? It was eight inches. It was so small. Yeah, check check in the the, uh, the the photos. Yes. And you'll see that monster. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, we, you know, caught four, five, six. Which you know, you think about it, that used to be what you'd start off with in the first morning or the yeah. first day you'd go out. Um, although it's better than some of the years past where there hadn't been any. Well, There's nobody look, large. Let's look at the future a little bit and talk about 2012 relative to flounder. What have you heard about regulations? Well, it looks like, from what I've been hearing from the Recreational Fishing Association, that there's going to be a change in New Jersey's flounder regulations. Apparently, uh, by way of the calculations, no matter good, bad, or indifferent, look like we caught too many pounds of flounder in New Jersey based on what we were allocated. So, in order to compensate the next year, we're probably going to have to lose either in increasing our size by a half an inch, if we want to continue to try and catch eight fish a day, or well, possibly drop down to six fish a day. And more than likely, I hope what they do is drop it to six fish a day uh, per individual. It's more than enough, and it will cover the losses and leave us stay right where we're at. Yeah. And I would think yeah. that's probably what's going to happen. We'll, we'll have to take a hit on it because, you know, because of whether there are good, bad, or indifferent uh, statistics on it. The numbers that are there are showing that we exceeded it. Uh, you don't want to be in New York, where uh, I, I don't know exactly where they're at now, but you know it doesn't take very much for them to exceed your poundage because any any fish you bring in is is a large fish. Yeah. Because they're in the 21, 22 inches for yeah. uh, their minimum size in New York. Uh, so yet you go down to Delaware, and I think there's still 17, and no closed season. You would think that the the, 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 the federal government would be can make it consistent because we're not talking about a, a water that is contained within inside the edges of New Jersey, contrary to popular belief, that water actually touches other states. Well, but what happens though, Charlie, is that these fish do have home ranges that don't. R the bigger fish are in the New England area, not down here. We're at the limits, the southern limits of our of our northern summer flounder population. Right. You get down to. Uh, in Delaware right. and yeah. well, Carolina is the southernmost. Uh, every now and then they catch one in the northern Florida area of our species, but by and large, it's up north. So th they do segregate out by way of what I think the way they do is by way of where they think the individual populations will run to. 
Uh, and then, of course, you have the individual management zones, which end up to be states, which are easier to handle than any other way. Well, either way, 2012 um, is what we've got to look forward to. The, the 2011 season over, so is over, so the national teeth, let it begin. <laughs> yes. Well, hopefully folks out there are having a better time. And uh, it looks like the striper run is starting at least in the north coming south. Anybody who's out there in the beaches, hopefully you're doing well. Uh, or if not, you're seeing somebody nearby you're doing well. Yeah, let us know. We, um, as we're voting-wise, we're out of the water. And uh, if you'll get a hold of us and, and uh, email us at charlie at fishsj.com, mark at fishsj.com, or joe at fishsj.com, uh, and, and send us your pictures or, or let us know how it's going where you are. And uh, we'll pass along at the next show. Well, guys, that's about it for today. Uh, we're going to call it quits, and uh, we'll be back again soon. So until then, I'm Charlie. I'm Mark. And I'm Joe. Keep your lines in the water. Let's go! Let's go! We go with a fish talk. Radio, talk fishing, and boat. So much more.